Ikaw ka si Kukun, and you pack for ice bridges. I'm Bobby Schaefer. Cyrus Harris, Sosolik resident. Roswell L. Schaefer Sr. I'm Grand Gurun. My name is Christopher Zappa. Ajit Subramaniam. Nathan Loxag. Carson. Taz Dekal. I'm Andy Mahoney. Sana Hauser. Kate Turner. Hi, my name is Sarah Betcher. Alex Whiting. My name's Corey. Scott. Sean Colbertson. Aaron Farber. Jesse Lindsay. Peter Bobang. An important facet of the project has always been to have a legacy, how to do this co-production of knowledge where it starts in the community and we work together throughout the project from the beginning. Everyone was on an equal plane and we're all creating it together at the same time. And uh, it's really exciting to be a part of a project like this. So we came and found the biggest whiteboard that we could find in Cotterview Sound so that we could try and visualize what came up from talking with elders yesterday as we took our first attempt to try and understand what the important questions are that locals here living in Cotsby have about the sea ice. And hopefully you feel like we so far are at least capturing what you've told us the other day and are listening. We felt that we found five or six interrelated questions emerge out of the discussion. It's really fascinating. All right, pretty curious. At the world, we have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the it's always really cool when we see a breathing hole. You see the marks of how they yeah they they, they, they chew the claw that. marks. They chew that. It's October and we're back in Kotzebue at the waterfront with a whole bunch of spotted seals behind us. How does the ice move depending on the different wind forces? When the winds come from the west, how does the ice move? When the winds come from the east, how does the ice move? So we want to place our instrumentation in various locations around the sound to capture these events throughout the winter and in the spring when we come here with the UAVs. The seal was visible on top of the snow, whereas normally it would be completely hidden inside its lair and we would never have known it was here. <laughs> Normally, in March and April, this is frozen solid all the way to the outside lead. It's not supposed to be like this up here 30 miles north of the Arctic Circle. The ice out here stops growing in the middle of winter. This is going to be the fourth year where we have no ice in the ocean. That's unheard of. And there are times when I went out here to hunt, I'd go 65 miles out straight out in the ocean and hunt. Now I can go a mile and a half, four miles. There's been abrupt and unexpected and unprecedented changes in the sea ice. We've got to recognize this as a threat to life on this planet. This past several years, we couldn't go out there because we didn't have, we didn't have stable landfast ice uh, soon enough throughout the winter. The ice that we're standing on just kind of formed here January. 
that should have been frozen in October. So we want to document the progress that we've made on this project so that future projects and communities can use it as a model. These are, I think, just extremely thought-provoking uh, questions that I feel it's my responsibility to try and help with. We have drones along here, and so then I don't know if we want to add another layer that says what drone information we have. We've been able to go all the way down to the tip of Cape Blossom, which is down here. It's almost exactly 10 miles. We've been operating drone flights with the chase plane for over two weeks now. We're getting two to three and even maybe four flights in a day. Yeah, it was really interesting up there. Just in the hour and a half flight time that we had, the conditions totally changed, the color of the ice totally changed, and the channel is very distinct. It's not broken through yet, it's still ice, but it's much darker than the surrounding ice. But it's much harder to spot the drone when it's flying over open water than it is over ice because color of the water camouflages the gray drone much better than the, the bright white ice. But it's important to us to get flux measurements over that transition area between the ice and the water, so continue to do that and just keep a close eye on it when it's out there over water. Final approach. At this point in the trip, almost near the end, we've done about 25 flights and approximately 30 flight hours with four different sensors in the airplane collecting data. We were flying two cameras today, a thermal camera that measures the temperature of the ice or the ocean and the seals, and a visible camera so we can see what we're actually looking at in the thermal camera. Finding seal layers and breathing holes for the, the seals. Thermal camera tells us about the stability of the ice. hanging in the sky. Path of the laser. We spent time out on the ice, finding out the thickness of the ice. We were able to be getting some measurements of snow depth. He reads it off the marker, it'll tell you. We put it in the water. Chukchi water is about 32 parts per thousand. I could see which way the current's going. We've made measurements of the ocean underneath the ice. From negative three forward. 49. Put a camera down the hole, see what the ice looks like from underneath. The idea is to look down in the seal hole and just get some underwater video to, to determine if there's any structure we can see. They're not gonna be real clear on this one. This hardened, uh, iced over section of the snow where you can tell that the seal had come in and out of the water. To the hole yeah. Ring seals and other ice associated species are gonna be facing some challenges with climate change. We want to know as much about what their needs are and how they might be affected as possible. There's gonna be an open house on Saturday from five to seven. There's gonna be a live demo with the drone. Here's some preliminary data products. Are there better ways that we can share this information with you and share it back out to the community once we leave? Then we can see again that there's a mother and a pup. Today we went to Kotzebue High School. We spoke with the juniors and seniors employability class and the physics class. And we talked to them about what we do individually, how we got to where we are, what type of formal education we had to have, and what it means to be a career scientist. And take an opportunity that might scare you. New path for ice bridges. 
it was a time when a lot of things came together and, and it came together at the ice age. Learning to look at the ice in a new way.